All right, part two, we've already established what we're gonna do. We're definitely gonna put Windows 7 on this. So we gotta swap in the original hard drive. And it seems that the keyboard has popped itself back down. Shit. Um, well, I guess we'll just go back in where we did. And just pry up again. There we are. And with any luck, this will pop up without breaking the rest of it. I should have taken the battery out, but oh well. We'll do that later. Here is the keyboard connector. Just pop that open thusly. That's about thus. <laughs> Okay, and we'll take out the mousey. I don't need the screwdriver. You know, if they made these cables just, you know, an eighth of an inch longer, it would certainly make this a much easier operation. We're also going to investigate what can be done regarding the, uh, the sort of broken D plastic things. Probably nothing, but you never know. That seems stuck now. Let's take the battery out. I don't think that's going to make that much of a difference, but what a turd. Oh, God. This is why you don't buy Asus. I didn't put any damn screws in the thing. Disgusting. Disgusting. Alrighty, so now we're back, and um, CMOS battery we were going to think about. That is probably, oh it's actually right here. And that's more or less something proprietary, which I'm not going to get or even bother, so it'll just live there. We'll pull this drive. Easier said than done, because this doesn't have the stupid pull tab on it. Got some schmutz on me, there we go. And then they don't design it right, so it just... What the fuck? You know, oh, this is in the screen. Well, then it's hard to work on, isn't it? And then it blocks your view. Oh, what a turd. What a turd. Alrighty. I always hated when people bought these things thinking there was some semblance of quality. Now that screw goes in there, so that screw is going to be the hard drive screw, which is this one. And put that back in. plug this cable in. Don't forget to do these things because if you do you're going to take the machine apart again and that is something that you probably didn't want to do in the first place. That's in. Put the top cover assembly back on. Snap it in and down. I think that's fine. I'm not even going to really worry about it. It just is. I still don't want to really get rid of the XP load because I have no way of really getting it back, uh, you know, in the actual factory recovery. I, I could theoretically take an image of the drive first, but y you know what? It's not even really worth it. So, let's see. That's in. Now the keyboard, once again, is a royal pain. Royal pain in the ass. There we are. Put that in. And that in. And you always, when you go to tighten these down, they always put surface mount components right there. So if you're really... 
not watching what you're doing, you can... I didn't want to do that. Shit. Uh, see, like I said, if you're not watching what you're doing, you stand a good chance of damaging the board. Fortunately, we can just flip that over. Now, we'll get the other screwdriver and start putting in screws. So, there was one here under the warranty sticker, which is now void. So, that's good. There's one up here. There's one over here. There's one over here. There's one over here. And the retarded one in the corner. And I don't think there was one on the other side, which makes it even doubly retarded. Yep, there we go. Now we can put the keyboard in. Rookie freaking mistake. Okay. Got some more screws. There are four left. We're only going to be able to put in these two. And top end is just going to have to be. There was one screw in here, right here. The silver one. Put this back. There it is. Okay, screw that down. Like I said, these two are not going to be able to go back because of the broken out um, things here. There they are. See if it'll focus on that. That thing. If you want, you can put your screws through that and just tighten them down for the day that you don't actually go and fix it. So we'll do that another time. That's too much pain in the ass right now. All right, let's snap it back together. Open it up. Plug in the power. This horrible little connector. Get some power. It powers on by itself because it's Asus. CMOS state and time not set? Well, great. Um, we're going to have to set it now. So the time is 13.13. Thirteen, thirteen, Mockingbird Lane, yeah. And the date is three, ten, eleven, two thousand two. <laughs> no, twenty seventeen. And we'll go and look through the rest of the BIOS right quick. I'll of course move the camera in a moment. Um, that's fine right there. The fan is running, so that's good. Nothing we need there. A tappy CD-ROM, removal device, hard drive. That's all good. Quiet boot off. Boot booster disabled. So apparently, and the LAN on just because. So apparently the um, the BIOS reads the hard drive to see if that recovery partition is there because when I had the other drive in. That option was not even in the BIOS. Just another way they can propri pro proprietorize the system. Is that right? <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Nope, didn't want to boot off of the flash drive even though I said boot off of that first. So we got some playing around to do, wonderful. On second thought, two things. First of all, I had the wrong fucking flash drive plugged in, so that's why it didn't boot. 
And secondly, <laughs> I think I have a BIOS update on here that I can apply using the Windows XP crap here. Good, the mouse works, so that's good. Does the keyboard work? Well, I guess we'll find out in a bit. Um, Asus, now you can actually use this. Update, Asus update. Let's see if we can just sort of do that, get rid of the light. The BIOS from internet didn't work, so update BIOS from file. It doesn't ask what file yet. Now it does. We'll go to, oopsies, uh, this drive. I think it was in here. And it wasn't on her chipset. I gotta look for it now. There it is, now I got it. And let's see if it goes and blows itself up. System needs to reboot for Flash BIOS. Do you want to reboot? Yes. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Where the hell did it come up with that crap? And I don't want to shut it because I don't know what the hell it's going to do, so I guess I'll just have to come back. Okay, that really didn't take that much time at all. Just finished 121 updates. And now theoretically it's going to update the BIOS. If it'll do anything, okay. Don't touch the system. Reading file, start erasing, start programming. I applaud the use of the, um, the text mode spinner, so to speak. Although, uh, yeah, it's going. It's just slow. Really slow. I always lo love these text mode spinners. In fact, I made a couple of other ones using high ASCII characters back in the day. If this would actually focus on the damn screen, we'd actually be in good shape. So, um... We'll just wait. It's still programming. How about that? <laughs> I wonder how long this will actually take. Probably too long and only fuck things up in the end. But, uh, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Just open it back up, rip out the hard drive, and blow up the dead CMOS battery, and go from there. You know? Oh, okay. Start erasing boot block. Programming boot block. So that should take at least five times longer than erasing it. Really shouldn't take very long. This has already taken a lot longer than... It's supposed to be, in my opinion. And... Right. There. Please press the power button to shut down the system. And it flashes. Okay. Now it's off. Now it turned itself back on. Oh, wow. BIOS. Go in the BIOS. And uh, it forgot all of its settings. Great! It remembered the date and time. Hmm. Let's see. Everything here is good. Everything here is good. Everything there is good. Boot device priority. CD-ROM, removable hard drive. Hard drive is correct. Boot settings, quiet boot off. Onboard LAN enable, boot booster disable. Exit and save, and we'll just see if it'll boot back into XP. And the answer is... Uh, 
Yes, it does. Awesome. Okay, it boots XP. I just read my flash drive, which I don't care about. Turn off. Restart. And with any luck, the BIOS should be fully configured to simply boot the flash drive. And it will start booting XP, I'm sorry, <laughs> Windows 7 setup. And we'll get that installed. Let's just see if that actually works. And we are rebooting. So far, so good. Great. Great. Great, great. This machine does not consider this to be an, uh, to be an external removal device. It consider, considers it, uh, 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 it considers it to be a hard drive, and because of that, in the BIOS, I had to set that as the primary hard drive, and the one in the system is the secondary, so we'll see what kind of damage that's going to do once Windows Setup gets underway. All right, well, it came up. Now, it does have the recovery partition listed here, but, um, I'm, I, you know what, maybe I'll leave it, so... Yeah, let's do that. We'll delete partition one. Usually it's like hooked to the main partition and it's never going to friggin' work. And we'll delete partition two. And we're going to go to... wonderful. Um... Ah, what the hell. We'll just go and do it and see if it'll actually still work. If not, I'll just reinstall. It's no big. It doesn't really take all that long on this machine, so... I got time. Alright, we'll let that install and see what happens. Okay, Windows 7 just got installed. So we'll shut it down. Then I'm gonna go back in the BIOS, make sure that boot booster and shit like that is still off, which it absolutely should be. And then we'll mash F9 and see if we can get into the recovery partition of XP, which I kind of doubt. But we'll give it a shot. Yeah, in fact, it doesn't even show up now, so there's no way it's actually going to even work. We'll try it anyway, just for shits and grins. You know as well as I do, it's going to boot Windows 7, in which case I'll just restart the install. Oh, it fucking worked! No shit! Holy crap! I'm amazed. Now, uh, some of you probably have already commented before watching the entire video, which I strongly discourage. Why don't you just do a dual boot, Jay? Because I don't want a dual boot. Okay, so I'm going to lose all my crap. I did lose 40 meg of the drive, but I don't give a crap about that. We'll just let it reboot and go into Windows 7, and provided it does that, then I'm going to start all the service packs and updates and bullshit, and we'll come back when it's all done. So let's see if it will boot back into Windows 7. I believe so. I have... That flash drive is still plugged in. Uh, I don't think it's booting off of it, but we're good so far. So I think we'll call it right there.